A couple of months ago, I visited Eastern Java in Indonesia to take a look at one of the weirdest natural spectacles on the planet. Between tsunamis, volcanoes, and regular earthquakes, Indonesia has more than its fair share of geological disasters, but it's safe to say no one's ever seen anything quite like what's happening here, in the rural district of Porong. For the last two years, gray watery mud has been spewing from the ground here at an incredible rate. Every day, enough mud is coming up to fill 50 Olympic-sized swimming pools. It looks a bit like a big brackish lake, but geologists call it a mud volcano. They're amazed at how much mud is still coming out of the ground, and it's totally stumped the Indonesian engineers who have been trying to stop it. To get a bit of perspective on the destruction, here's a satellite image of the area from October of 2005. And here's that same location today. By the time I got there, Porong was a wasteland. The mud has swallowed 12 villages, dozens of factories, and has forced more than 16,000 people from their homes. I went to a makeshift refugee camp where more than 2,000 locals are still living, not far from the big mud lake. No one really knows what set the mud eruption off. Geologists and some locals blame an Indonesian mining company that was drilling for natural gas in the area. They say the company may have accidentally triggered the eruption by tapping into a pressurized aquifer. That allowed the mud to shoot up to the surface. The company says the eruption was caused by an earthquake. Obviously, with industry involved, it's been controversial. And the fact that the mining company has ties with an Indonesian cabinet minister, who also happens to be one of the country's wealthiest men, certainly hasn't helped. The government has ordered the company to pay people who have lost their homes, but a lot of them aren't happy with the deal. I met Yuli Romati at the camp. She told me she turned down the company's money. Not only did the mud destroy the house where she lived with her husband and two children, it also buried the factory where she worked. Without a job, she says the $5,000 the company offered her won't be enough to start over somewhere else. It's tough to say whether Yuli will ever be able to go home again. All attempts to stop the eruption have failed. Now government engineers are constructing huge dikes to contain the rising mud. They're also hoping to flush it out to sea by pumping it into a nearby river. That could keep the damage from spreading, but some geologists predict that the eruption could continue for years or maybe even for decades. If that happens, the controversy about what caused a disaster and who's going to have to pay to clean it up is likely to get even messier. This is Peter Ritter for Time.com.